Wouldn't it be great if you could freehand a mask, they said? Multipoint game script is clunky at best, they said. It should be possible, I say. Welcome to SETI Astro. Love it or hate it, I think we're all very familiar with the game script. Uh, the one that allows you to like place ellipses down. I mean, I've always struggled even grabbing these little points on the side. There we go. And you know, this this is great. It, it allows you to make a nice ellipse to kind of cover your object. And then you can make some masks on that. It can do, a, a you know, various types of uh, masks as well. Also, it has the multi-point. Thing to draw. And I have never had great success trying to see. This is my struggle with multi-point. I can never grab these points I've already put down. And a lot of the time it just ends up making another point. And, uh, and I get something like that. I've had a lot of requests to just freehand this. Uh, so, let me introduce my freehand adaptive mask editor, or fame. You can get it under script study astro fame. And here it is. Uh, I'll cover the instructions quickly, its capabilities, and we'll go from there. So, by default, I have it uh, select to the freehand shape. The zoom is set to fit the the dialogue. You can expand the dialogue. Um, there are various zoom levels on here, or if you just click fit to preview again, it'll adjust to the, the bigger expanded dialogue, uh, you know, depending on how big your monitor is. Shift click allows you to freehand your mask. And then control click. You can move that mask wherever you want. Alt click, you can rotate and resize your mask. And there's a couple options for mask too. So that's the free hand. You can draw an ellipse. And maybe you wanna, you know, you still kinda like that ellipse functionality. So you can draw an ellipse for some of these bigger galactic items. Uh, you could also do a rectangle. Maybe we want a rectangle down there. And again, control click, you can move them and alt click to resize and rotate them. But if you want to go back and move one of your other shapes, you could hit the space bar and cycle through what shape is active on the screen. So then you can go back through and adjust that one if you needed to uh, do some adjustments with it. There's also a blur amount that just runs a convolution on the final mask. There's various mask types. By default it's set to a binary so everything inside your bounded areas will be white. Everything outside of them will be black. There's a lightness mask which will based on the lightness of the image below create the uh, variance and brightness within your mask based on that. Note for a linear image, your mask is going to almost look black, right? Because the brightness levels in a linear image are near zero. And then for a chrominance mask, uh, that's going to have bright areas anywhere there's a lot of saturation, a lot of color. Uh, so you could really focus on color in your bounded area versus uh, the lightness. And we'll look at those in a little bit too. The gray undo last shape removes the active shape you're on. And then if you have a bunch of shapes on here, the red lightning bolt removes them all. If you do have a linear image, uh, you may want to click the auto STF and that allows you to see your, your linear image. So let's jump into a quick example with the mask types and take a look. Okay, I do wanna show you uh, what the different mask types do. We'll turn the blur level all the way down so you could really see what's going on. 
I'm gonna go ahead and uh, draw a shape here that kind of covers a chunk of Andromeda. And we can click Execute. And you can see it created our mask for us. And then we can click on Lightness and Execute again. And it'll make another mask for us, this one based on the Lightness. And then one for the chrominance. We'll click Execute as well. And there's yet another mask. So as long as the dialogue's open, you could add shapes, you could change it, you could hit execute and make as many uh, masks as you want to, you know, fulfill whatever needs you have with that. So let's look at what these different masks are doing. All right, like I said, the binary mask is just creating a black and white uh, mask. So nothing, nothing special there. The lightness mask, that one just shows the lightness of the main image within the bounded mask area. So this would be good if you want to uh, increase contrast or really highlight particular uh, variances in brightness within your mask. And if I kind of blink between them, you could see what it's actually selecting, right? I think everybody's familiar with a lightness mask. Next, let's go ahead and look at the chrominance mask. So this is one that's focusing on highly saturated areas. You can see here the core of Andromeda is almost black. That's because it's white, right? There's no color data in there. Uh, so here we could even zoom in on some of these other structures. So now you can see these areas here all are highly saturated. So this is all the color data and within your mask, now you can manipulate the color saturation. You could bump that up, maybe change the hues a little bit, whatever you need to do to uh, you know, manipulate your image. But it is a great option that this focuses solely on the chrominance. And you may see objects in there that you didn't see before based on color that you wanna highlight. There's this great little S squiggle off to the side here and on the main image in Andromeda you barely see it uh, so that may be an area you want to you want to focus on it also works equally well for grayscale images uh, here's a linear grayscale image we can go ahead and open our fame script up and at first it looks black just because it's linear you could click auto STF and there's our image and again, uh, you know, shift click, you could draw your, your mask on it. Uh, we'll keep the blur up this time and we'll generate our binary mask. And now it has nice uh, blurred edges to help with that transition. You can go all the way up to a blur of 200 if you need to. And again, let's look at an example here with uh, actually blurring of uh, one of these lightness masks and chrominous masks. So here's here's the area we want. We'll keep the, we'll go to like a blur of 40 or so. We'll look at a lightness mask. And a chrominance mask. And now you can see they'll act just like, uh, almost like a range selection mask here with the lightness, right? The, the brighter stuff is really the bits that are highlighted. The dark areas really aren't highlighted. And then same with the chrominance. This is all your colored area where you can affect uh, within your bounded area on your freehand drawn mask. I do think this was a feature that has been sorely needed within PixInsight, just the ability to draw a mask Again, in my fame script, you have ellipses and rectangles and you can rotate and resize them. I hope everybody gets a lot of use out of the freehand adaptive mask editor. I have updated my website, setiastro.com, under Pix Insight Scripts. Again, it has the repository. If you want to add it via the repository into Pix Insight, you need build 1605 or higher to use the repository. Otherwise, I have all my scripts available as standalone including our latest uh, freehand adaptive mask editor script. I want to give a sh huge shout out to our channel members that helped work through the beta versions and provided feedback. 
If you want to become a channel member, we'd greatly welcome you. Then you get access to uh, fiddling around with these scripts as they're getting developed and, and other teaser information. Please comment, like, and subscribe.